Hi, everyone. Uh, one second, just let me share my screen. So in yesterday class, we have discussed about Agile methodology and what is the importance of Agile methodology. Today we'll see like what is the responsibility of the QA engineer. Uh, we know about SDLC process and we know about Agile methodology. So today we'll see in these methodologies, what is the importance of the QA engineer from beginning to ending. Okay, so today is like key responsibilities of QA engineer. QA engineer means quality assurance engineers, nothing but testing engineers. Okay, so many companies, they don't call as test engineers, they call as QA engineers. So remember the terminology, QA means quality assurance. Today topic is this one. Okay, so I'll share you a, a screen. We have seen waterfall model, like right? requirement analysis. After requirement analysis, we'll go for design and after implementation, after testing, and after deployment and after maintenance. So mostly here, our main goal comes here after implementation testing phase. So this is about waterfall model. Coming to the agile methodology, in agile methodology, it's like, uh, see, you are delivering, every sprint you are delivering a piece of the software. That is nothing but Agile methodology. It's like a, Agile means every iteration is like a mini waterfall. That means every iteration, you are doing all the things from design, coding, testing. In every iteration, all these phases will be there. So Agile is also called as every iteration is like a mini waterfall. So what happens in Agile? Whenever the product is minimum viable product, I'm just, you know, uh, refreshing about the yesterday class. If the product is minimum viable product, then it will be released into the market. It will be released into the client and he will release it to the market. Okay. So that after a certain period, we are adding the latest functions. So when the final product is there, then we'll have more customers. When the product is minimum viable product itself, it will be released into the market. If it is completely the agile process uh, with the agile process with the product is completed, then it will have more customers. That is the advantage of agile methodology. So you see here, so everyone we have a major release, like after certain amount of sprint, we have major release will be there. Again, you know, customer preview will be there, major release will be there. Again, with the requirements, upgrade will be there. Again, major release will be there. Again, new future will be added. Again, release will be there. So this is how it happens in agile process. So if you know the exact difference between the waterfall and agile methodology, this is how it looks. Waterfall means it is so big that, you know, People are not sure after 12 months, you know, they are able to deliver it correctly or not. So that's not the case with Agile process because, you know, you will be delivering piece, a piece of software every time. So even the project size is same for both the waterfall and Agile. Agile has more advantages because you have done so many deliverables and you have done so many releases. So burden will be less in Agile process because every iteration you will be releasing. So that's the advantage of Agile methodology compared to waterfall model. Next, coming to the testing, how we are doing testing in all this process. In testing also, we have requirement analysis will be there. Then after that, we plan, test plan, how to test, what is the test plan contents and how we develop test cases, what is environment setup, how we execute the test case and what is the test cycle closure. So we'll discuss about all these things. Okay. So before that, I just want to know uh, what are the responsibilities. Okay discuss about the responsibilities. What is the first responsibility anyone can say from the yesterday's class because yesterday also I explained. Understanding the functional requirements. It's same for both developers and testers because once you got the functional requirements specifications, everyone has to understand those requirements. So I'm just telling you from a testing point of view, but understanding the functional requirements is common for both the developers and testers. Understanding the functional requirements, this is the first responsibility. So for testers, writing the test scenarios. You should know what should be tested. What are the checkpoints? Today we'll explain about the checkpoints, you know, how we'll define the checkpoints. So writing the test scenarios. With the help of those checkpoints, we'll prepare test scenarios. And with the help of those scenarios, we'll develop test cases. That means what to check on the functionalities. There are different checkpoints will be there. I'll explain in depth about the checkpoints. What to check on the functionality. OK. 
okay so there are like you know different checkpoints will be there we'll discuss about those checkpoints today and the next step is after test scenarios just develop test cases how to check the functionality that means here just remember developing the test cases it's an interview question so i'm just again mentioning in test scenarios, we are checking what to check. So what to check is nothing but test scenario. In many interviews, they ask, you know, the difference between the test scenarios and test cases, uh, no one is able to answer it very clearly because even when I have done interviews, no one answered this perfectly. So I'm just explaining you. Developing test cases means how to check. Just remember test scenarios means what test cases means how. So how to check the functionality. Test cases is nothing but how to check the functionality. That means we have very details will be there, major details, detailing. Everything is, every detail will be there in the test cases. So detailing about the functionality validation. What is test case means? Detailing about functionality validation. So just remember test scenarios means it will be there what, what has to be checked. That will be there in test scenarios. Test cases means how to check. Detailed steps will be there in test cases. So difference between the test scenarios and test cases. Just remember this what and how. Important one, important point. And the next responsibility is the important responsibility is test execution. This is where you, every test engineer or every QA engineer will be recognized. Because how many test scenarios you develop and how many test cases you develop. Okay, fine. They'll review it. That is fine. But the main, uh, the capability or the performance of the QA engineer will be decided in the test execution phase. So validation on the implementation product. Nothing but validation on the implemented product. Test execution means what happens in test execution means validation on the implemented product. That means application to check whether the application functionality is meeting the requirement or not. What we'll do in test execution, we'll just check functionality is meeting the requirement or not. Expected result is equal to actual result. That is the meaning. So what happens in test execution means you have to say functionality is meeting requirements or not. So this is what happens in test execution. And the last thing is defect management. This is also done by QA engineers. I'm just explaining about the responsibilities of the QA engineer, not everyone, because today we are discussing about the responsibilities of the QA engineer, and we'll discuss about the checkpoints. And uh, tomorrow we'll see what is test scenarios and test cases. Today I'll explain about, you know, how we'll uh, define the defect, what are the priority will be there, CVRT will be there, all these details will be covered in today's class. So last thing is defect management. So defect management means how we are managing the defects and bugs, how to manage, manage defects. Many companies, you know, uh, they use this defect and bug, uh, they use it as a synonyms, like a same words. But theoretically, if you want to know the difference between the defect and bug means, bug means, you know, if any issue found out by tester or QA engineer, it's called bug. Defect means generally developer, they say. But many companies, they use it interchangeably. Defect and bug, they consider it as a safe. So don't confuse, you know, if uh, anyone says defect, then uh, don't say that. If they ask you specific definition, then say that generally bug will be uh, issue found out by tester means then it's called a bug. If anything in the development phase, it comes, then they call it a defect. That's it. And the final is test execution plan. Test execution plan, we need not think about it because generally, you know, test managers or uh, test leads or whoever is senior in the project, they'll take care of this test management plan. So you need not think about what is test management plan. So it's a responsibility of uh, responsibility of managers, test manager or senior person, senior. Senior QA, whoever is available, senior, they'll take care of the test execution plan. 
So these are the responsibilities. So when you enter a project, these were the responsibilities, whether your experience is, you know, you are a fresher or two years or eight years or even 15 years, the responsibilities will be same if you are working as a QA engineer. Okay. Probably, you know, uh, then what is the difference between the fresher and experienced people means they have more experience, they conduct better reviews and they'll help the freshers. But the responsibilities is one and the same for all the QA engineers. Okay. So now, uh, I want to explain about writing the test scenarios. That means we have different checkpoints will be there. Then I'll explain about what are the checkpoints. So before that, you know, I just want to give you a product. So everyone must be knowing the tea vending machines in our companies, right? Many companies have these tea vending machines. So I'll just take one tea vending machines. I'm not very good at drawing, just try to understand. So we have, you know, a tea vending machine, we have uh, different buttons will be there. First button. We have, what will be first button? Anyone can tell, you know, anyone can participate if it can be more interactive. If anyone can tell what are all the things will be there. If anyone participates, then it will be more knowledgeable to the other people also. Okay. Suppose I'm just taking it as a tea vending machine. Can anyone tell what are there in the tea vending machine? Okay, so I can say this is a display. This is display, okay. And we have uh, options will be there. This is like a uh, full cup, full tea, or you can say full. And this is like a half cup tea. Can anyone tell the scenarios like, you know, if I, I have given you this tea vending machine, then tell me the some points that how you will test this tea vending machine. Anyone can participate. It's a general question. No need to have any expertise on this. And here we have hot water. So can anyone tell the points like what are all the things, you know, we can test here? Kishore, Pawan Kumar, Susmita. Any points like what, what will be the things we can test here? Because I told you <laughs> there is display is there. It's a tea vending machine. We have one option is there full cup tea and one option is there half cup and third option is like a hot water. So can you tell me the points then how we can test, how we can start testing? And you are the part of the testing team. Okay. Okay, I'll explain you one example. So I'm expecting, you know, at least for the next example, you have to tell the points. So example, you are the part of testing team. First one. First checkpoint we'll see is whether the button is working or not. Whatever the buttons, okay? So my first checkpoint is button is working or not. And my second checkpoint is display console is working. I told you here display is there. So whether I'm able to see in the display that, you know, tea option is there, full, full tea cup option is there, half tea cup option is there, hot water is there or not. So I'll just check those one. That means display console is working. It's a general thing. I'm not preparing. I'm not explaining about the test scenarios, test cases, how to write test scenarios, how to write test cases. It's a general thing. When you are given a product, what are all the things? Even if you go, you purchase something, you, you check all the things, right? That's what the checkpoints are nothing but. So the third checkpoint is if any error in the display console. That means any error means if T is not available, whether it's displaying or not, T is not available, T powder is not there, any error message is displaying or not. So any error is displaying the console or not.
Then the fourth button is button one is delivering full cup. I told you button one is delivering full cup. So button one, I'll check whether it's delivering full cup or not. Delivering full cup of tea or not. Then the same way, button two. Delivering half cup of tea or not. Then button three delivery hot work. Hello. Make the session, you know, more interactive so that you know you will get the more subject. Why I am saying you to participate means if you interact more, if you tell these things, then you will remember the subject more and you will have that interview fear also will be reduced. That is the purpose that, you know, I want all of you participate in this. So delivering hot water or not. So third scenario is delivering hot water or not. So any other checkpoints? You have many, I mean, you can think of. I'll give you one minute time. Just come, come up with some checkpoints. Any other checkpoints? We can check power supply is working or not. Some tea vending machines, it works with battery and some even with power also, if it's not working, then what will be the thing? So power supply is working or not. The final, what is the main thing? The company, one company developed this tea vending mission. So what, what are all the points they should take, check? If it has to be successful, if it has to get more customers, taste of the tea, if taste is not there, no one will come, no one will purchase that product. So we have to check the taste of the tea also, okay? And easy of use. If the product is very complicated, so, our generation is okay. Our previous generation, you know, they really, they struggle uh, to use these kind of products because they are not very familiar with the pressing, you know, full cup, half cup and all those things. So user friendliness is very important. In any, any product you take, ease of use or user friendliness is very important. Understood? So these were the some of the checkpoints, you know, even you can come up with many checkpoints with the product. These were some of the checkpoints. So whenever you get a functionality or FRS documents, you just, you just have to uh, write it down, you know, in, in a Word doc or Excel document or anything, even in book also, you can write these checkpoints. Checkpoints, no one will review it. So with the help of these checkpoints, again, we'll prepare test scenarios. And with the help of test scenarios, we prepare test cases. I'll explain all those things in the session, today's session itself. So just understand what are the checkpoints. So these were some of the checkpoints. So... I want, I'll give you one more example. We have a uh, newly developed pen is there. Can anyone tell the checkpoints for the pen? We have newly developed pen. Can anyone tell the checkpoints for the pen? Anyone? Kishore, Pawan Kumar, Shridhar, Susmita, pen. What, what are all you check with the pen? First of all, is it writing or not? Yeah, correct. Okay. First point. What will be the next point? Good. That's it? Only writing or not? You don't check any other things? Pen means only for write. Take a pen and, you know, just analyze what are all uh, I can test with the pen. I want you to think so that, you know, whenever in the interview, if the interviewer asks some random question, you should be able to tell at least, you know, three to four points about it. That's why I'm asking you to think and tell me. It will be very helpful in the future for you. Okay, first of all, we'll just check writing, whether the pen is writing or not, and smoothness. Some, some pens will be very hard. 
So I'll just check. If it is smoothness, then you know people like it. Then what will be the third point? Color or ink. If it is very thick, you know, you don't like the color is smooth. The color is good. People will like it. Color versus ink. So I'll just check that one also. Then comfort, grip. The grip has to be very comfortable. If it is very hard, if the paper, you know, uh, it's staring up with the grip, then people don't like it. So I'll just check for the comfort grip. Then usability, how long I can use this? Usability of pen. I'll just test this one also. Then we have refill possibility. If refill is completed, then I can refill it or not. Or again, I have to go for a new pen. So refill. That is also there. Cap. How is the cap? The weight of the cap. If some caps will be very heavy weight, then you know you really can't write comfortably uh, by keeping the cap at the back of the pen. So cap or button, whatever you can see. Okay. Durability. How long you can use it. These were the some of the points, some of the checkpoints when I give you, you know, to develop the pen. Understood? How to write the checkpoints? Just, it's a minimum. It's a basic knowledge, minimum knowledge. Okay? So we'll just see for login page, how will be the checkpoints. And I want you to participate generally for login page. What are all the checkpoints will be there for the login page? Important. Those login functionality is very important. Anyone tell what will be the checkpoint for the login page? Keyboard is displaying or not? Oh, sorry. Keyboard, keyboard is displaying or not? Okay, so just imagine this is the login page. Just see it once and tell the checkpoints. Keyboard, keywords. Okay, you are saying keyboard or alphabets? I mean, can you? Keyboard while typing password. While typing password, keyboard is achha, uh, alphabet. Uh... Yeah. Alphabets are displaying or not. Yeah, this is also one scenario. Correct. Okay. And? What will be the other checkpoints? Checkpoint means, you know, all the points. Whatever you want to test, whatever you will get in the mind, you know, you, you can tell all those things because those are the checkpoints. Huh. Okay, I'll show you the application. So this is one application. So the username is small letters admin and the password is small letters master. You have options are there. This drop down is there. Login button is there. Reset button is there. Forgot password link is there. Register link is there. So these are the things. So now we can tell the checkpoints for this application. Okay. Username and password, it should be case sensitive because we have given only small letters. If you give capital letters, then it won't work. So my first checkpoint will be username and password should be case sensitive. Okay. Options. I told you there is a drop down is there. Okay, drop down is working fine or not. So if I see here, this is the drop down. So I'll just check whether it is working fine or not. So that will be my other checkpoint. So options, drop down is working fine or not. Other checkpoints, anyone want to say anything? You can see. Hmm? I'll check valid login. By giving the valid credentials, I'll check whether it is logging fine or not. And I'll check invalid login. By giving invalid login also, I'll check whether I'm able to log in or not. This is other checkpoint. I'll check 
see how many things are there in this application. Reset button is there. So I'll say reset button checking. It's fine or not. Reset is working fine or not. So reset button checking. This is one checkpoint. And you have forgot password. Okay. You can check forgot password is working fine or not. Registry is working fine or not. These are all the checkpoints. Only. Forgot password. Then you have register. Whether you are able to register it or not. That is one checkpoint. Then again, any other scenarios? If you are registering, then what are all the things you have to consider? Register. When you are registering, what are all the things you have to check? So generally registration means you have to check the password strength. This is a checkpoint, so that's why I'm not showing you. We'll check the password strength in registration. Then any other things? Most important thing for any web application. For any web application, you have to check the compatibility, whether you know you are able to use it in all the browsers. Compatibility testing is nothing but whether you are able to use the application in all the browsers, that is Chrome, Mozilla, Internet Explorer, Firefox. In all the browsers, you should be able to use that application. That is nothing but compatibility. So any web application, compatibility is important. So I'll just check the compatibility in multi-browser. That is also one checkpoint. And Anyone has any ideas? Any ideas? I told you last uh, in last checkpoint, user friendliness. Whether it's user friendly or not, that is also very important for all the applications. And any checkpoints? I mean, even you can come up with some new points also. Everyone, you know, they can't cover all the scenarios. So if you have any points, then let me know. You can check the performance. How the performance of the application is going. Then you can check the load testing. How much load it is taking. That is, at a time, you know, 100 people are using the application, then how it is performing. That is nothing but scalable. There are different tools are there for that, but just know load means how many number of people at a time they can use. We have some other tools are there for that. Then we can see security testing, which is very important. What is mean by security testing? You logged in with your credentials and after when you logged out, your credentials should not display so that you know if other person is using the system, they should not see your credentials. Those are nothing but security testing. So these were some of the checkpoints. So we have seen checkpoints for the you know key vending machine, for the pen. So once you get any product, if they just say some product only, then you know you have to write down some checkpoints such as these can be tested, these can be tested. So from that you can develop test scenarios, and from that you will develop the test cases. So this were the responsibilities of the QA engineer. First you have to understand the functional requirement. Then you start writing the test scenarios. Before the test scenarios only, you will come up with different checkpoints. There are different checkpoints will be there. So develop the test cases, then test execution, defect management, test execution plan. All these things, you know, uh, will be there in the test execution plan, which will be taken care by test manager, okay? So I told you about, you know, STLC. And what are all there will be the test planning. So test planning means what to test, how to test when to test, all these things will be there in the test planning. Then designing, execution, defect reporting, and we are closing off the test. We'll see what, what does the test plan contains. Test plan is a document that describes the test scope, strategy, objective, schedule, deliverables, and resources required to perform testing for a software product. So test plan is nothing but you know, what is test, what we are going to test, and what is the strategy, and what kinds of testing we are following. All these things will be there. So the test plan, it contains scope. Okay, scope means what to test and what not to test. What is the scope of the testing? See, uh, you just, you know, 
take application, you go on testing, there is no point. You should know the scope, what to test and what not to test also. Because if the, some futures are not developing, still you are testing, there is no point. That means you should know what to test and what not to test. So that will be there in the test scope. And what is the strategy you are using? That means what kind of testing you are using, whether you are using functional testing, non-functional testing, all these things will be there in the test plan, okay? Defect reporting, how you are reporting the defects and what is your roles and responsibilities? As a test engineer, what are you, I told you about, what are your roles and responsibilities? First, you have to understand the functional requirement, then you have to come up with checkpoints, test scenarios. So all these things, they'll define in the test plan. Test schedule. Schedule is nothing but, you know, when to test, dates, timelines, you know, you can't go on test continuously for 100 number of days. They'll give you some schedule. Within these days, it has to be completed. That is nothing but test schedule. Test deliverables, nothing but each and every time, you know, you have to deliver something because in a sprint, two week sprint, you need to develop something. You need to test something and you have to deliver that. It will be there for developers and testers. Developers will have, you know, uh, product deliverables will be there for us. Test deliverables will be there. Pricing, uh, this will be taken care by, you know, clients and everything. What are all the pricing will be there. Entry and exit criteria, that means when to start and when to stop. Sprint start, you have to start and by sprint ending, you need to exit. And after that, again, you need not, you know, touch the application. You should not touch the application because developers will be doing some other thing. So you should know the entry and exit criteria and suspension and resumption criteria. If any showstopper, showstopper means uh, you can't able to proceed further. That is called showstopper. Just remember this terminology, showstopper is very important for testers. If you are testing something, if you find any showstopper, that means you can't proceed further. That is called showstopper. Then you have to suspend the testing and inform the development team, I got the showstopper. You need to give all those details. So once the developer fixes, again, you have to start. That means again, you have to resumption. Resumption means again, you have to start the testing. So suspension and resumption and what cases, you know, you can suspend the testing and what cases again, you can start testing. This will be there. Tools means bug tracking tools will be there and automation In test plan. If you are using any automation, they'll mention about the automation tools and uh, what are the bug tracking tools will be there. Risks and mitigations. What are the risks and uh, how you can over, overcome those risks. All these details will be there in the test plan. Approval means who should approve, I mean, who should approve, you know, to start testing and everything, approvals, test manager will be there. So he'll approve those things, okay? And what is use case? Yesterday I explained about, you know, what is use case and all those things. Use case means uh, with the help of use case only, you will understand it clear, okay? So generally, you know, use case means it contains three items, actor, action, goal, outcome. I will tell you a simple example. I will just take a login application only. So this is the login application we have. I am an actor. Okay. So I am just open this application. I am just using the application and I performed a login functionality. That means I did action login. So after login, I'm going into the page. That means outcome. That is nothing but actor action goal outcome which is the user which can be a single person or group of people interacting with the process. So I just opened the application. I clicked the login button and I performed action, which is to reach the final outcome. Goal means I'm able to open this next page. That is my goal. So use case means it describes the requirement. It contains three items, actor, action, and goal. Test scenario. That means the possible area, what to test. So in test scenario, we have many uh, different uh, test cases will be there. Test scenario is a bigger term. In test scenario, we have different cases will be there. Test case, how to test. That is nothing but step-by-step -step action to be performed to validate the functionality of AU. That is nothing but how to test. So test case contain test steps, expected result, actual result. Yesterday, someone asked, you know, definition of ready and uh, is uh, user story is clear or not. That means use case means generally, you know, product owner. It will be given by product owner. Definition of ready, we told about, you know, user story is nothing, user story is clear or not. That is nothing but in user story, we have use cases will be there. So this use case is created by product owner. We have to understand the use cases. Generally, you know, sometimes they'll give you as a, uh, just paragraph, you know, take the example of this login only. I'll just mention, you know, uh, as a paragraph, like, you know, login functionality should be there, username, password should be there, login and reset button should be there. 
So two, three lines, I'll just give you as a paragraph. That also can be understandable. But the more understandable is if I give the image. Okay. User image. If, uh, so I'll give you image. So with the image, you will understand it better. You will understand that, you know, there is username is there, password is there, login blue button is there, reset red button is there, forgot password link is there, register link is there, options drop down will be there. So images will be more understanding. So use case can be given to you in any format, in a paragraph format. But, you know, generally people prefer picture format, which will be more clear. So along with functional requirement specification, this use case is also given to the team, to both developers and testers. So developers also, you know, they start building the product by seeing the picture, it has to be uh, like this, it has to look like this. Tester also will test with the use cases, with those pictures, especially. If the picture is given, it will be more easier. So if it is, uh, they give you as a paragraph also, then also you have to come up with use cases and test scenarios, okay? So generally test cases, I told you, test scenarios means what we have to test and test cases means how to test. So test cases generally uh, prepared in Word document or Excel document. And we, do, we directly don't upload in Jira tool. Generally, if we think, example you take, we are taking a Jira tool. Jira has more advantages. We have many bug tracking tools will be there. But directly, you know, after preparing test cases, you can't upload in Jira tool. There will be reviews will be there. If a fresher or two years experienced people, if he's preparing test cases, some senior person, he'll review it. He'll review the test cases, whether all the scenarios were covered, whether test cases were written as per the standards or not. So after reviewing, then only you'll upload those test cases in the JIRA tool. So this is brief about what is use case, what is test scenario, and what is test case. So sample use case. So use case means library user. I told you, use case means you have active action, goal outcome will be there. So as a library user, what are all the actions I'll be doing? I'll register book loan, I'll register book written, query book availability, all these things I'll do. So if as a librarian, what are all the additional action I can do? I can add a new book. It's just an example for your understanding. Okay, this is a sample use case. Then I'll tell you about difference between the use case and test case. In use case also, it will be there and test case also, it will be functionality will be different. Then what is the difference? It describes the functional requirement prepared by business analyst or product owner. Test case means test steps. What are all the steps we need to perform while testing? That is called test steps. Generally, it's prepared by test engine. That's the difference between use case and test case. So with the help of use cases only, we'll prepare test cases. Then what is test scenario and test case? I already told you what is test scenario and what is test case. Test scenario is what is to be tested. Test case is how to be tested. So example, test scenario, checking the functionality of the login button. Bigger picture, this is the overall picture. Just functionality of the login button, you have to check. Then how my test cases will be. Click the button without entering username or password. That will be one test case. Click the button only entering username. That will be other test case. Click the button while entering wrong username and wrong password. Like this, you have 10 more test cases will be there. But test scenario is only one test scenario. That is checking the functionality of the login button. So in test scenario, you have n number of test cases will be there. So that is the difference between the test case and test scenario. Then they'll tell you about what is test to suit. Okay. So here you have seen like in test plan, you have many test suits will be there. So one test suit. Uh, test suit one, we have test case one, test case two, test case three, test case four. That means all the test cases belonging to one functionality or one type of testing will place it in a test suit. Suppose all the login functionality, I'll keep it as a test suit one. So all the login functionality test cases will be there. Or I have another option. All the regression test cases, I'll keep it as in test suit one. So all the regression test cases will be there in test suit one. If I am executing test suit one, just I'm doing regression testing. Anything, anything you can place. Test to suit means it contains a number of test cases belonging to that category. If one category will define it as a one test to suit. Another category will define it as a test to suit two. Okay. Test to suit is group of test cases which belongs to same category. So categories, we don't call it as a categories. We call it as a test to suits in testing language. What is test case? I told you what is test case. A test case is a set of actions executed to validate particular feature or functionality of your software application. It's nothing but test case. What test case contains? Test case ID, test case title, what is the description, 
preconditions, what is the priority, what is requirement ID, steps, actions, expected result, actual result, test data. Test case should contain all these things. You see here, module name, you have requirement ID, priority, test case ID, test scenario. What are the preconditions? Verify the URL of the home page. To verify the URL of the home page, what are all the preconditions should be there? Browser should be there. We have URL should be there. We have to click. Then what are all the test cases? What are all the steps? Open the browser, enter the URL, click go or press enter. What is the actual result and what is the expected result? If both actual result and expected result is same, then result is passed. If actual result is not equal to expected result, then result is failed. So all these things will be there in the test case templates. Okay. If you see here, test case ID is we have one, one priorities is given P1, P3. And if you see here requirement ID, that means for second requirement, we have two test cases are there. Just understand. For requirement ID one, I'll explain in the coming time, I'll explain, but I just want you to understand. For requirement one, we have only one test case is there. For requirement two, that means home page. Requirement one is home page. For booking a flight, that means the module name is book flight. So for second requirement, we have two test cases were there. Okay. So that will be described in the requirement traceability matrix. So you'll explain, you'll understand it better. What is test environment? Test environment means, suppose uh, you are testing in a different environment. Application is ready. The test environment is equal to the client environment. Whatever you are testing, the environment, whatever the client is having the environment, it should be same. That means the client place environments need to be set up when doing testing. Like what are all the hardware they were using? What are all the drivers? What is the internet speed the client is having? What is the RAM he is using? Which software version he is using? Which Excel he is using? Which Mac version? Which window version? What kind of database he is using? The same setup, it has to be there on your system. So that when you are testing the application, if you resolve the defects, then you don't find any defects in the client environment also. If test environment is not equal to client environment, there are chances that, you know, bugs will be more in client environment because the environment, what we tested is different from the client environment. So another name of test environment is test, nothing but test bed. So if you see here, test environment is a platform specifically built for test case execution on the software product. So just remember test environment is equal to client environment. It is created by integrating the required software and hardware along with proper network configuration. Whatever the client is using the same software and hardware you have to use, it has to be like a real-time environment. So another name for test environment is test bed. So whatever live environment, it has to be there on your test environment. So if you find any defects, so it will be solved, then also it will be solved in live also. Just remember test environment should be equal to the live environment or real-time environment or equal to the client environment. Test execution. I told you, we are preparing test cases and all these things. Just give me a second. I think I missed requirement traceability matrix. Yeah, this is important. Mm -hmm. Requirement traceability matrix. So I told you requirement traceability matrix. What is requirement traceability matrix? Mapping of requirements with the test cases. That is the main purpose of RTM is to see all test cases are covered. So no functionality should miss while doing software testing. Okay. We have requirement ID, requirement description, test case IDs, all this will be there. Here it will. So requirement number is one, two, three. What is the requirement login application? So for this specific requirement, we have these many test cases will be there. Okay. So requirement ID corresponding to the test cases. And we have requirement number three, four, five, ticket creation. For this, we have these many test cases, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These many test cases will be there and we'll describe the status. So some of the test cases got passed and some were failed. So requirement ID, test cases IDs will be there. This is what I mean to say. The main purpose. So what is the main purpose of requirement traceability matrix? All test cases are covered so that no functionality should miss. So divide functionality on the basis of requirement, then prepare test cases so that, you know, all the functionalities, no functionality will be missing. That is the advantage of requirement traceability matrix. Uh, just remember requirement traceability matrix is an important thing. I just want you to understand this figure so that you will understand. For one requirement, you have n number of test cases will be there. Status will be there. Requirement IDs, requirement numbers. Requirement number or requirement ID is one and the same. 
This is how the requirement traceability matrix should look like. Okay. Test environment I explained you. Test execution I explained you. What is test execution? Test execution is nothing but you know you have all the test cases, test data, and everything is ready, and you are performing test execution, and you will see whether it's equal to actual result or expected result. So I'll just explain you. Test cases are executed based on test planning. So test status of test cases as marked like passed, failed, blocked, run, and others. Documentation of test results and log defects for failed test cases is done. You will prepare a documentation. That is nothing but defect reporting. So all the blocked and failed test cases are assigned bug IDs. So whatever the test cases are failed, we'll create it as a we have one more thing is there bug tracking tool where you know all the bugs will be uh, placed. I'll explain about it later, but just remember, these are all the activities you do in the test execution phase. You will create a box and you give different IDs to the box. So once you know uh, our developer fixes all the bugs, again, retesting will be done. Defects are tracked till closure. All the defects are done. I mean, we'll close it. Test execution will close it once all the defects were closed. All the defects were solved and we tested all the defects. Deliverable means provide defect and test execution report within the complete. Deliverable means we'll We'll give test execution report, test case execution report. These many times we have performed testing. These many times we got bugs. Again, these many times, you know, we retested those bugs. All these things will be there in the deliverables. This is the test execution phase. Guidelines for test execution. So what are the different guidelines? The build the deploy to QA environment is the most important part of test execution. So test execution is done in QA environment. That is nothing but test environment. Test execution happens. That means you perform one cycle of testing and you found bugs. Again, you report the bugs to the developer. Again, you know, they'll fix it. Again, it will come for test execution. So it happens in a multiple cycles. Test execution phase consists executing the test cases plus test scripts. Test scripts means if you are performing testing through automation, then test scripts. So test execution means if you are doing manually test cases, if you are doing automation test classes plus test scripts. Okay, these are the guidelines for test execution. But the most important thing is development environment is different and QA environment is different. So 100% QA environment is equal to the production environment. If they are developing in a different environment compared to QA environment, that is fine. But QA environment is 100% is equal to the production environment because after testing only it will go to life. So make sure that the environment is same on both production and test. That is important. What is the defect and bug? So any mismatched functionality found in the application is nothing but defect or bug. So during test execution, test engineers are reporting mismatches as defects to developer through templates or using tools. So we have many defect reporting tools are there. ClearQuest, DevRack, Jira, Quality Center, Bugzilla. Jira is most famous. Because these two, ClearQuest and DevRank, they are only bug tracking tools. But in Jira, it's a test management tool. That means all the things, even developers also, they'll use Jira from beginning to ending. Like, you know, uh, you're creating a bug. So developer also, you know, they'll open the Jira tool and they'll see. They'll create their own issues. Any developing tasks also, they'll create in Jira. So Jira is a test management tool, which is more important. These two are bug tracking tools. So many companies nowadays, they are using Jira because it covers all the things. It, it is bug tracking tool. It is test management tool. Developers are using, uh, even you know, product managers, everyone is using Jira tool. So we'll explain about Jira tool you know, in the coming sessions. I'll explain very uh, clear picture. I'll give you very clear picture about the Jira, how Jira works and everything. So just remember some of these were the defect reporting tools. Defect report contents. I told you because test case, we have test case ID description and all those things. The same case, if you are finding any defects or bugs, it has to be like this. Defect ID should be there. Defect description should be there. Which version? What are the steps? What is the date raised? Reference detected by all these details should be given by tester. Who prepares defect report? Tester. Tester will uh, prepare the defect report. Then defect classification. So how you classify the defects? We have severity will be there, priority will be there. Uh, there are high severity, high priority defects will be there, high severity, low priority defects will be there. So all these details will be there in the defect classification. What is severity and what is priority? We'll see. Severity means seriousness. How seriously it's affecting the application is nothing but severity. 
So priority means importance, how important it is. So severity, I'll explain about the severity first. It describes the seriousness of the defect and how much impact on business workflow. Showstopper, if any showstopper is there, that means you are not able to proceed further. You found an issue, you are not able to proceed further, that is nothing but showstopper. This defect indicates nothing can proceed further. Example, application crashed, login not work. If login itself is not working, then you are not able to go into the application. So that is a showstopper. That is high severity. Critical, the main base functionality is not working. Customer business workflow is broken. They cannot proceed further. That means with login, you are not with login, you are able to enter into the application, but you are not able to perform any operation. Suppose you take banking application, you are not able to transfer the fund. That is, we call it as a critical. So ordering product in e-commerce application is not working. So login itself is not working, showstopper. Login is working, but you are not able to perform any operation. That is nothing but critical. Major, it caused some undesirable behavior, but the future application is still functional. So you are able to send the mail. Just take an example of Gmail. You are able to send the mail, but there is no confirm message. So you are not sure whether you know uh, the receiver has received the mail or not. So those are called the major issues. Minor means look and feel issues. Spelling mistakes. Everything, functionality wise, everything is fine. But you know, there are spelling mistakes. The alignment of the screen is not proper. All these things comes under minor severity. So this is about severity. Then what is priority? Importance of the defect. Okay, defect priority states the order in which a defect should be fixed. Suppose that defect, we have priority will be there. Every time, you know, in Jira process or Agile process, they'll mention about whether it is a P1, P2 or high priority, low priority, just understand the difference. Where we call it as a high priority, where we call it as a medium priority. High priority means that defect must be resolved immediately as it affects the system severely and cannot be used until it is fixed. So it has to be, then it is given high priority. Medium means we can wait. In next, uh, see one sprint, second sprint, third sprint. So for next sprint also we can wait, that is called medium priority. Low priority means, you know, you can fix it anytime later. Somewhere, you know, uh, I can say, priority means, you know, uh, like uh, somewhere in the middle of the pages, some spelling mistake is there. You are able to enter in about a page. It's working fine. But somewhere in the paragraphs or in terms and conditions, somewhere in the paragraphs, you find one spelling mistakes. Then, you know, that is called as a low priority. That is nothing but that means, User, you know, he really can't find that issue. That is called low priority. I'll explain it. I mean, with the figure, it will be more clear. Okay. So, in what kind of issues we call it as a high priority, high severity, high priority, low severity? I'll explain. So, high priority and high severity, login is taken to the blank page. So, when you have taken an application and we are trying to log in, it's taken to the blank page, then it is high severity, high priority because you can't do anything without fixing it. So those kind of issues, we call it as a high severity and high priority. Then what is high severity and low priority? About us, link, taking to the blank page. That means you are able to log in the application, but about us, severity is high, but priority is low because you are able to use the about us link. About us link, you know, it really doesn't help user. But it's a high priority issue, low severity issue. Okay? High priority and High severity and low priority. This is high priority and low severity. Which kind of issues we call it as a high severity and low priority. After user is logging into the application, he can see home page. But there is a spelling mistake in the home page. You see here, low severity and low priority. User opened the contact page. Email ID has spelling mistakes. Both have spelling mistakes. Then why it is called high priority and why it is called low priority? Anyone has any idea? From a user perspective, in the home page, if I am visibly able to see the spelling mistake, it is a high priority. Because from user perspective, it's a defect only. But functionality wise, it is working fine. From user perspective, if it is an issue, then it is called high priority. So here also spelling mistake is there somewhere inside the pages, in very random pages. So really, you know, user really can't find this spelling mistake of email ID. Then we call it as a low priority and low severity. So from user perspective, if it, the issue is a bigger issue, then we call it as a high priority, okay? Just understand the difference between what is called high priority and what is called high severity. High priority, high severity, major functionality is not working, then it is a high severity and high priority. 
So this is high severity, low priority. Because severity is high from user perspective, the severity about SBM functionality is working fine, but not able to see. That is nothing but high severity and low priority. So what is high priority? From user's perspective, if it is an issue, that is called high priority and low severity. Low severity, low priority means somewhere in the middle of the pages, some spelling mistake is there. That is called low severity and low priority. Understood the difference? Anyone has any doubts here? Understand this concept. This is very important. It's an interview question. They'll uh, explain you, they'll ask you a question, tell me high severity, high priority, high severity, low priority. Then you should be in a position to be able to answer this and you should be able to explain also why it is called high priority and why it is called low priority. Why it is high severity, high priority, all those four permutations and combinations, you, you should be in a position to explain. So understand this figure completely and if you have any doubts, then just tell me. I'll explain this, why it is called high severity, high priority. No doubts, then we'll proceed further. Any doubts in this page? It's an important concept. How you categorize one defect as a high severity and high priority? Because it's the tester responsibility to categorize it's a high severity defect or high priority defect. That means tester must, must know which kind of issues he should give as a high priority and which kind of issues he should give as a high severity. Some more examples. Low priority, low severity. A spelling mistake in a page not frequently navigated by user. Those kind of issues, we can give it as a low priority and low severity. Low priority and high severity. Application crashing in some very corner case. I mean, uh, you are able to log in the application. Somewhere in the middle of the application, it's not working. Somewhere in the middle. High priority, low severity, slight change in the logo color or spelling mistake in the company name, main page itself. Say I open the application. Somewhere here, it's not working. Somewhere in this menu position, it's not working. Then low priority, high severity. Application in crashing in some very corner case, not the main, very corner case. Low priority, high severity. Then what is high priority, low severity? In the main page itself. Suppose you think it's a main page. Here itself, stock items. So spelling mistake, some spelling mistake is there. Then it is called high priority and low severity. Logo color or spelling mistake in the company. High priority, high severity. This is kind of showstopper. Issue with login functionality. User is not able to log into the application. So those kind of issues are high priority and high severity. So what is high severity and low priority? Web page not found when user clicks on a link. User does not visit that page generally. Generally, some kind of pages, even if you see here. So some kind of pages, you know, I need not visit every day. Suppose like about us or help. Okay. If I click this, information is coming. But web page not found when a user clicks on a link. If something like, you know, I get an issue web page not found or something like that, then those kind of issues, we call it as a high severity, low priority. Because user does not visit that page generally. I don't use it regularly that page. I use some other things. But still, it's a high severity web page not found. What is low priority, low severity? Then? Any cosmetic or spelling issues within which paragraph on the page? There is nothing but low priority and low severity. The same one. Any cosmetic or spelling issues? So these were some of the examples. Just try to understand. I want you to spend some time and try to understand the difference between the severity and priority, which kind of issues it's called high priority and high severity and which kind of issues call a low priority and low severity. Just, just understand it more better. Just go through some more examples and understand it. Defect resolution. Okay. What is defect resolution? So after receiving the defect report from the testing team, development team, conduct a review meeting. So we find some bugs and we'll go to the developer. Generally, they won't accept those are defects because, you know, they think we have done it perfectly. Uh, that rupture will be there. But generally, it's a healthy environment. It will be a healthy competition will be there. They won't accept it. So they'll give you what are the resolution types they'll give. They'll accept some defects. They'll reject some defects. So why they'll reject some defects? They'll say, you know, according to the functional requirement specification, it is the perfect only. Then they'll reject those defects. Duplicate. That means the functionality not yet developed are still yet to be developed. Then they'll consider it as a duplicate. Enhancement. That means 
whatever the issue we found, they say that, you know, that will be there, that will be released in next sprints, not these sprints. Then those kind of issues, they'll give it as a enhancements. Some defects, they won't understand how they found out those defects. Then they'll give, they'll ask for the need more information. Some defects not producible. I'll explain you a scenario here, which I have experienced not producible. Generally, what happens is uh, testing to, we are performing testing and we find some defects and we'll explain will just give those defects to the development team. So initially, many people don't know the standards. They'll just uh, describe the defect and they'll just give. So what happened in one scenario is we are getting that defect in specific time, like in afternoon, 2 o'clock, sometime. Afternoon 2, 2 30 only, we are able to find that issue. So when developer, they saw the defect at 4, they said it's not reproducible. Uh, it's an unnecessary defect. So in those kind of scenario, it's better for every defect we found Maintain a screenshot along with the time and everything. That means the time is now 9.30. The date is 12.04.2023. If we have these details in the screenshot, then, you know, we can argue with the developers or we can, you know, convince the developers that, you know, with that specific time only, I'm able to get the defect. So they can't give not reproducible resolution time. So whenever you are raising a defect, make sure that there is a defect with the screenshots. Fixed. So when they're fixed, they'll fix and it's as designed. I mean, they can say, you know, probably, you know, they have more information compared to testers. Then they say the defect is as per the design. So these were some of the resolution types testers and developers should do. Whenever we find the defect, they'll accept, reject. They can give these resolution types. So according to those resolution types, we have to give further information. So these were some of the defect resolution. Okay. So any queries? Any queries on the topics? Are you clear? What are the checkpoints and how the test plan is? What is severity, priority, all those details clear? If any queries are there, I'll give you two minutes. If you have any queries, then we'll see or else we'll meet tomorrow. I'll give you two minutes. If anyone has any queries, then let me know. In any of the PPT. This is important. Understand the requirement traceability matrix. Whatever I explained to you that's sufficient, still try to understand it more deeper because this is an important concept. And high severity, high priority. This is also very important. Uh, you go any interview, one question will be there definitely on requirement traceability matrix and on this high severity priority. Manual testing, definitely uh, they last ask you questions on these two topics. So prepare well on these two topics before going for interview. Okay, any queries? Pavan Shridhar. Pavan Shridhar? No ma'am, no ma'am. Okay. Okay, thank you then. Have a nice day. We'll meet you tomorrow. And tomorrow I'll explain about, uh, I, today I explained about the checkpoints and everything. Tomorrow we'll see how test scenarios will be developed. From test scenarios, how we'll develop test cases. All those things we'll cover tomorrow. Tomorrow class is also important. So don't miss the tomorrow class. Okay. Okay, thank you.